This video is sponsored by Unveil. As a diehard My Little Pony Friendship is Magic fan, I was admittedly skeptical, though optimistic, for My Little Pony's fifth generation. I watched the movie the day it released on Netflix, and overall, my opinions on it were pretty mixed. I liked the new settings that we were introduced to, like Maritime Bay and Zephyr Heights, but the new characters are a different story. I was either completely indifferent about them, or they got on my nerves. Some of them were clearly either a fusion of the character traits that made the main six from G4 interesting, or just main six knockoffs entirely. On top of that, they commit the most atrocious character design sin being absolutely boring. All of them, with the exception of maybe Zip, look like background characters and not in a good way. All of their silhouettes are just extremely basic. And I also feel like they could have pushed the color combinations further, but I'll talk about that specifically when we get into the redesigns. So let's hit them with the main characterification beam. Before we get into the redesigns, I would love to talk about today's sponsor, Unveil! Unveil is the best place to house your OCs, giving you the tools to fully customize their pages and worlds. You can add images to their gallery with the quick ability to credit other artists if you got a piece as a gift or a commission, and other artists can favorite and comment on all of your little guys. Unveil knows that OCs can get pretty complicated, so they have several tabs in each character's profile for all of their various traits and stories. Write a paragraph of exposition in the writing tab, or fully flesh out every single one of their likes and dislikes in the traits tab, or leave them a complete and total mystery. The choice is yours. And if you have multiple OCs from the same world, Unveil lets you easily connect them together through their worlds tab. The pages are extremely customizable. I had a whole lot of fun playing around with the colors on my character's pages. If you want to check it out, I'll have a link in the description. You should go give me a follow over there. I have tons of art over there already. Unveil is anti-AI and never NFT, so you don't have to worry about any of that nasty stuff sitting next to your art. Thank you so much to Unveil for sponsoring this video, and let's get into the designs! Of course, starting with Sunny, since she's the main character, it always bothered me that she doesn't look in any way like her name. Like, I don't think Sunny, when I look at her, I think Scootaloo. And obviously the main cause of that is the fact that her pelt is orange and her mane is purple. In combination with the fact that she's very happy and also rides roller skates in a few scenes, there's quite a lot of comparisons that can be made to Scootaloo. As the protagonist following Twilight Sparkle, she definitely had very large horseshoes to fill, if you will. And with that being said, honestly, I think she falls short in pretty much every regard. Absolutely no offense to any Sunny fans out there, but Twilight just succeeds so much better as a protagonist. She has a lot more character growth, her design is a lot more recognizable, and I definitely recognize that this is coming from a place of bias because G4 is so special to me, but honestly Sunny just feels boring in comparison, which is not helped by the fact that her design is not too interesting to look at. It may just be because I'm not a big fan of orange or purple, and like I said, she really does look a lot like Scootaloo. But I also think what bothers me is that she doesn't look like her name. All of the main six from G4, you look at them and then you hear their names and you go, oh yeah, that's Applejack, that's Rainbow Dash, right? But she doesn't look sunny and the fact that they don't talk about their cutie marks at all in the movie makes it feel like their cutie marks aren't an important part of them, which they should be. And so the Star Scout part of her name also doesn't make a lot of sense. I thought her color palette was surprisingly dark for being named Sunny. So in order to separate her more from Scootaloo, I made her pelt a brighter yellow orange and changed the color of her mane. But then all of the feedback I was getting from my friends said that she just looked like Apple Bloom now. But her hair isn't red, it's pink, and her pelt isn't yellow, it's orange. I will admit that I haven't seen the TV show that went along with the movie, the 2D one, I think it's called Make Your Mark. So I'm not too familiar with the 2D designs or how they act in the show. But I know that they wanted to have a lot of different variation in the body types of the ponies. Which I thought was really strange, because I feel like that would be easier to do through the 3D movie, but they didn't. Sunny, Izzy, Pip, and Zip all have the same body type. 
And I know they wanted to separate themselves from the art style of Generation 4 in order to make more of a distinct difference, but the shapes of these ponies are just not appealing at all. They don't have the same sort of simplistic charm that Generation 4 had, and even though all of the G4 ponies had the same body type, there were differences in their hair that made their silhouettes stand out. So even with the limitations in animation, they were still able to make them look appealing and different, but the G5 ponies just kind of don't. So for Sunny, I wanted to make her friendly looking, I wanted her to be short. She has pretty much just the stereotypical pony body type. When it came to her colors, I actually really liked the contrast of the teal with the orange of her coat. So I kept it and put it back on her bag, as well as giving her a scarf. I imagine maybe it belonged to her dad. And then I added pops of yellow in her design by making her bows yellow in her hair. I think overall it just makes her feel more sunny, like the blue in her design is the sky and then her pelt and her bows are the sun itself. You can also see that I ended up changing her cutie mark. I didn't like how unimportant the cutie marks seemed to be in the movie, so I wanted to make their cutie marks really represent them and actually be important to them as a character. And another thing is I am not touching Sunny's alicorn design. You could not get me to touch it with a 10 foot pole. It's, it's not happening guys, it's not happening. Anyways, here is our finished Sunny Star Scout. Now, Izzy's redesign is probably where I'm gonna lose a few people. I don't know if Izzy is like a fan favorite or anything. I don't know if any of them are fan favorites. I haven't seen a lot of people talking about G5, but I don't know if editing Izzy's design to the extent that I did is going to be considered like sacrilegious or something, but I just need you to trust me on this, okay? Trust the process, guys. Where there was nothing wrong to me, at least with Sunny's personality and my main gripes came with her design, it's actually the opposite for me with Izzy. Well, I'm not the biggest fan of the blue and the purple that they chose for their design, I did think she was really cute when the movie first came out. But now that like two or three years has passed and the 2D show has come out, I'm sorry guys, I'm bored, I'm bored. She is very obviously a Pinkie Pie clone trying to capture the same charm and energy that Pinkie Pie had with her being quirky and fun and bubbly. I don't know guys, I don't know. Not saying that characters are not allowed to be quirky and fun and bubbly after Pinkie Pie, but y'all are seeing the comparison that I'm making, right? And with her special talent being like crafts and stuff, she just kind of feels like a fusion of Rarity and Pinkie Pie, and I don't know how I feel about that. So the first thing that I wanted to change about her was her personality, and then I knew her design would come after that. I wanted her to really be the moon to Sunny's son, and since the two of them are kind of a duo, it's a little bit hard to do that when both of them are very upbeat and bubbly, and as cute as that is, I wanted them to have a little bit more contrast in their personalities and designs. So the closest comparison I can make for Izzy's new personality is Yuri from Doki Doki Literature Club. She's very mellow, kind of gloomy, but she's not mean. She always means well. She's a little bit shy and kind of awkward, but the one thing that she truly stands out in is her crafts and her art. Izzy does pretty much any arts and crafts type hobby that you can think of. She has a Michael's Rewards card. For my international viewers, Michael's is a very popular chain of arts and crafts stores in North America. Her house is an absolute mess. She owns several sewing machines. There is tons of paper everywhere. She has fabric scraps everywhere. Every single piece of furniture in her house is handmade or hoof made. And because the unicorns have lost their magic, spoilers for the movie, by the way, but the unicorns have lost their magic and the pegasi have lost their ability to fly. But because she doesn't have magic, she does have to make things by hoof and she's quite good at it. So much so that she probably doesn't use her magic a whole lot even when she does get it back. And so I think that would be really interesting, a unicorn who doesn't like to use magic. Anyways, back to her design. Uh, you can see that I gave her a lot of accessories, her hair is tied up. She's probably one of the designs that I changed the most. 
but I really wanted to make her a unique and interesting character, not just, you know, a Pinkie Pie clone. I think she still gets excited when it has anything to do with her passion. Like, she gets way into arts and crafts. She does not play around with her adult coloring books. I thought it would be really cute if her and Sunny had similar accessories. So Izzy also has a bow and then she has a little scarf around her neck and she also still has her bracelets. I think, you know, she made them herself. I think what they tried to do with her color palette was really interesting. With fun and bright and bubbly characters, you normally see a brighter, warmer color palette. So I think it's really interesting they went with the combination that they did. That being said, I don't know if it works particularly well. I think it is quite jarring to see such a bright and fun character have such a dark, dim color palette. Her colors are more saturated in the movie, but in the show, they are kind of gray. They shifted the blue of her hair more towards purple, probably to make them fit in together, but I really like the blue that they used for her hair. So I kept the original vibrant blue and then just made her coat more of like a dull blue-gray purple. I knew she wouldn't be recognizable at all if I didn't keep her coat at least a little bit purple. I changed her cutie mark quite a bit. I thought the original was cute, but like I said, it just didn't fit with her too well. So I gave her a moon and star pin cushion. I thought it was so cute. And that makes it a direct opposite to Sunny's cutie mark, which I also think is really cute. And here is our finished Izzy Moonbow. I would have loved to do all five in one video, but I just didn't have the time to. I'm working on a really big project behind the scenes that I hope to show y'all soon, so my videos might be kind of shorter for the next few months or so. I've already started working on Zip and Pip's redesigns. I don't know about Hitch, I don't know what I'm gonna do with him. So hopefully there should be a part two to this video soon, as well as an eventual part three to the Equestria Girls redesigns and a part two to the Sanrio redesigns. I realize I leave y'all on cliffhangers a lot, which is not my intention. I just lose motivation to work on certain franchises sometimes. I wanna branch out from doing redesign videos anyway. I would love to do more tips and tricks videos and even some more draw with me videos. But as always, let me know what you want to see in the comments, what characters you want to see me redesign, what videos you'd like me to make, um, if there's any specific area of art advice you'd like me to make a video on. If you want to see what I'm working on, make sure to go check out my Instagram and my Twitter, or if you want exclusive content, check out my Patreon. I have four tiers, $2, $5, $7, and $10. $2 will get you scrap video content, $5 will get you exclusive sketches, $7 will get you a role in my Discord server, exclusive videos, and exclusive full pieces, and $10 will get your name read right at the end of my videos. Thank you to Elarista, Little Wolfine, Full Fledgy, and Puntastic Artist, as well as everybody else who has decided to subscribe to my Patreon already. If you'd like to check it out, there's a link in the description, but don't feel pressured to give anything. Just you watching my videos already helps me out more than you could ever know. That's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much to Unveil for sponsoring this video. As always, I have been Lucky Inkyo, and I will see you very soon.